This is called Easy Assessment. It's really quite nice. There it is. Let's click onto that. Now, this is not, it's not set up for a specific kind of assessment, which for us makes it really, really interesting. Now, this is the first page you come to, and what you want to do first of all is go to Setup. I'll just press Setup there. And then let's have a look at Groups. Now, groups could be all sorts. It could be year groups, it could be uh, particular teachers, it could be all kinds of things. So you can see here, I've got Chris's class, Clive's class, and Richard's class there. You can add a new class down there or add a new group, which could be absolutely anything. So I'll just say manually there. And let's say Lois's class. So, oops, just got a rest, got Lois. And then class there, done. And that's it, that's set up. So once I've got my classes set up, what I can now do is just go into Richard Sensory class and I can add some students. And these are actually students who we used, uh, so names we used on a con the iPad conference. Uh, let's just have a look. Um, you could just add one. Here we go, add a new one. So uh, I'll add it manually. So let's go there and then let's just type in David. There we go. And then done. And then let's have a look. There was an error while adding this student. I uh, never noticed anything wrong, but there you go. Uh, actually, no, there wasn't an error. He was absolutely fine. So not sure what went on there, but we'll leave that in because that might happen to you. And then let's just go back. And that's my sensory class. Right, so now I've got my classes set up or my students set up as well. Let's just go to back. And then we were just working in groups there. Now we want to go to rubrics. This is the things we're going to measure. Now, if I go to my visual tracking one, which I've already set up, there you can go, you can see track from left to right, track from, sorry, right to left, then left to right, then up and down, down and up, tracked on any diagonal, tracked circular. And I've got it scored one to 10 in the side here. So let me just show you how to set up a new one. Just go to back. And then we'll go to add new. So here we go then, add new. There it says manually. So let's just type in color recognition. There you go. And then we press done. And that's it, it's done. Now what we need to do is actually look at the criteria. So Let's go into there and it says you have no criteria in this rubric yet. Click add new to add. So we'll go down the bottom here, add new and I'm going to go manually and then we could have recognized blue. Which I just typed into there. I'll press done on the other side. Error. Don't know why it keeps coming up with that. Let's add another one manually and We've got red, there we go, add new manually, let's go green, etc, etc, etc. Now, I don't know why it keeps coming up with that error message, no idea. So then let's go to back, which is there, and then you can see just up the top there, it says we've got three criterias. Now, the other thing you might want to look at here is how you actually score it. It's zero to ten here, but if I just tap on that, you can see there that I could have it whatever number I want to. I can just, whoops, scroll up and down there. One to ten is fine for me for now. So I'll just close that there. Then we'll go to back. And then we're back to that page again, back again. And that takes us to there. Okay, so now what we need to do, we need to look at some assessments. So if I go to assessments there, and you can see here, Chris's sensory class, no assessments. Clive's sensory class, no assessments, etc. So let's go into Richard's sensory class. And it says that you've got no assessments in this group. So let's go to add new, a new assessment there. And I'm going to add it manually. So down here, what we're going to do is let's just type in the date. So 10th of the 11th. Uh, 2012, that's the English way of doing it, so there we go, 
And there you are. It's uh, set up as a date there. So if I click on the date over here, then it's going to ask me which students I actually want to go for, for this. So it could be I'm going to do a sensory session and uh, which students are coming down. Well, David's coming down, so we could say select all or we can just select David. There we go. Or I can select Narinda right there. And then oh, if you want, you can actually go and select everybody like that. So deselect all, better do that. So let's say we're going to have, uh, we're going to have David in this one. We're going to have Narinda's coming into this session. And so is Sophie. Okay, so when you've done that, we'll just click on to next. Then we get the choice to select the rubrics. So let's have a look at the, let's do visual tracking. Here we go. Just click on to visual tracking. There's the criteria. And here you can see at the top, it's got the pupil's name, David, right there. So now what I can do is I can go with David and let's just see what he did. So track from right to left. Well, actually, he's not that good at that. Uh, track from left to right. Uh, he's pretty good at tracking from left to right because of his position in his, uh, in his chair, could be. Tracked up and down, did a little bit. Tracked down and up, no, didn't get that. Tracked on a diagonal, didn't get that. And tracked circular motion. There you go. Then if I click on to next... That takes me on to Narinda here, and you can start to then, whoops, sorry about that. You can start to basically put their scores in down here. Next, we'll go Sophie. And if you remember, these are the three students who they could effectively be in my multi-sensory room session or what. Next now is blurred out, and we'll just go to finish. Now, one thing that's really worth taking note of is this. When you've done, say, for example, David's session and you've scored him, you could actually put notes in there. So I could just uh, type something in the top here. So if I click on there, that'll bring up my keyboard. So I could put something like, uh, let's have a look here. Yeah, David was really on form today. He attended well and enjoyed the projector. You could put something like that. If we go one down, so if I just come to photographs here, so I click on the photograph, just select action, and it says take photo, select from library, or remove photo. So a few options there for you to add a photograph. So here we go. What I'll do is select an action, select from library. Let's go there. Let's select that picture. And up the top there, it says done. So I'll click on there. And then the photograph arrives in there, which is really nice. Woo. And there's my picture. Um, this could obviously be a much better picture than that. It could be so a picture basically for evidence. Uh, video is your next one down here. So you could actually select a video from somewhere and put that back in. That is really, really useful. If I click the back bottom down there, then that was David. If we go on to next, which is there, we can do the same for Narinda's. So we can put our notes in here, we can put our photographs in there and other actions in there. So go to back. So once you've written all your notes and you've got everything down for everybody, uh, you can just check through it. Just go next. And that's Sophie there. Sophie's done. So here we can just go finish. And there it is. Now the that's the date of it. It could have been multi-sensory room session, 10th to the 11th. It dates it for you automatically there, which may mean that you're better off actually putting a, a, a name for the session there. But there it is. It's saved for you. Right, let me just show you another feature. Let's just go back and then back again. And then it says here, send results. So if I click on there, whose results? Richard's sensory class. That's the session. You may have more sessions down here. That's the session there. So we'll send the results there. And it says down the bottom here, export. And then do I want to link it to Dropbox or do I want to send it as an email? So you get email and it prepares it there. And then you can put in an email address at the top and you're off.
Now, when you've uh, when you've got when you've done that, uh, basically it'll put it in your outbox uh, on your email client, so that will get sent to you. I like this; it's quite interesting, and I, and I think it's one of those that you could really play around and manipulate this thing to make it work quite well for you. Maybe I've not used the best examples here, but you know, it can basically be used for any child at any or any student or any adult at any particular particular level. There's certain things I would prefer an app like this to really do, but at the moment, easy assessment, well, it is pretty easy and it's great for sharing information with other people. So have a look on the iTunes store, easy assessment. (laughs) 